Hey everyone, it's Sammy from Scrap Masters Paradise and today is going to be my first crochet video for this channel. This is a crochet nook. It's going to include some whips, work in progress. I'm going to include a yarn haul in here. It's quite a big one so I've got a lot to roll into this one video but I wanted to just sit down, talk about a few projects that I have done, talk about the works in progress and how that's going and talk about my like, I don't know, my pet peeve, crochet pet peeve. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It's definitely a pet peeve for my husband as well. He really pointed out I'm so bad at tucking in and weaving in the ends. And I even bought adhesive for it. And for some reason, that is my least favorite part of the project. So I'm gonna have to really just dig deep one day and just tuck in all the ends on my recent crochet project. So first one, I made a cardigan and it is weird. It's funky. It does not match. <laughs> like, let's get this straight. I'm not the proudest of this creation, but I made it. So I'm proud in that sense, but I definitely ran out of yarn. I had this huge ball of this pink like bubblegum colored yarn from Hobie and you'll see like a running theme. I work on a project and run out of yarn and I'm working on a project and I run out of yarn. That's why I have so many works in progress but I was not about to go buy more Hobie yarn because they're overseas. The shipping's expensive. It takes forever to get here so I'm like okay I'm gonna find something that coordinates with this bubblegum pink color and so I picked out a darker pink color. I thought I had two skeins of this. No, I had one. So I ran out of that one too and then I put in the white. So there are three different colors on it. It's very, very patchy. The colors are everywhere and I said, I don't care. I'm just making it to make it, to get it done. I will wear it around the house. Obviously I'm not gonna like wear this out. <laughs> it's like very patchy and weird looking but I love it and Olivia loves it too. Olivia's been wearing it around the house, so I have barely been able to use it because Olivia is using it, but I'm gonna show it to you. I gotta stand up for this because it's a long one, but I found this tutorial on YouTube, which is what I generally do. I search YouTube for whatever I wanna make, and I really wanted to make some sort of sweater or cardigan or robe or something to just lounge around the house in, and also just to say I can make sweaters because I've seen, I see some gorgeous sweaters and cardigans, and I'm like, I want to make that. So I ended up just following this tutorial to the letter, like almost exactly. And I really like this one because she made it so you could size it however you want. Like you measure the distance from here to your shoulder. And that's one of your distances for like this front panel. You also measure all the way across for your back panel. And so I felt like my measurements came out pretty decently. I wanted it to be pretty oversized so I could be wearing like clothes underneath it, but it ended up turning out pretty cute and I really, really like it. So it's got this really nice, this is a back post and front post double crochet and I really like it. it makes it look like a cable stitch or something it has it on the sides too so it has this really pretty edge work there's a couple of different stitches I learned an alpine stitch which you can see here the alpine stitch which is awesome and it's showing up really pretty on the screen and then these are double crochets mixed with they're called herringbone stitches so you have two rows of herringbone with one double crochet and it makes this really really pretty pattern you can see like it's big and oversized and cozy and I love it so I'm gonna stand up it's the same few stitches over and over again just in different patterns so you get the different like alpine stitch rows and things and it has two big pockets which I really like about this one so don't mind my workout clothes that are not matching I ended up just throwing on some clothes there you go um, but look at it it's super cute with the big giant pockets it's got the little alpine stitch at the top of the pockets at the edges and that pink is showing up super bright but it goes pretty far down there's the alpine stitch again at the bottom and of course the ends are not tucked in which I'll talk about a little bit more but it's just super cute, super cozy. I really like it. You can see like on the back there, the two different colors of pink. It's just like really funky. <laughs> basically, so basically it's just a really, really funky kind of cardigan, uh, but I like it. I like wearing it. My daughter loves wearing it. And yes, the ends are not tucked in. They're, they're everywhere. I haven't tucked in a single one. I just um, stitch in which ones I can stitch in. And then the rest of them are just dangling all over the place. And that's something I need to address because my husband's like, are you really finished with the project if you haven't tucked in all the little yarn pieces? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I finished with it. So he's like, uh, maybe you should tuck in the ends so it doesn't look like all of our blankets are very shaggy. <laughs> anyway, speaking of blankets, I did finish one blanket. This is a shell stitch blanket. Again, I found this tutorial on YouTube. I ended up making it, I think, bigger than like the plan had anticipated. I wanted it to be not a, just a little baby blanket. I wanted it to be a nice big blanket that both girls could snuggle up with. And I did end up adding a border to this and I don't think it called for a border. I just did a single crochet and then a double crochet and then at the top a single again, I think is what I did here. So I don't know, I don't exactly know what I did, but I made the little corner 
decoration there. That was all my extra thing because I wanted to hide the ends of things and I also wanted to hide the edges. They were foggy. So I am definitely a beginner at this. I don't claim to be really good at this. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> and I just try my best. But again, like there are fuzzy sticking out strings. So my husband's like, uh, maybe you should tuck those in. I think maybe one day I'll tuck those in, but it just looks really cool. So I have two alternating colors on each like a section. There's a section here that's got the purple and the um, ice cream yarn. And then I have a section that's pink with the ice cream yarn, another section that's purple. And then I ended with the pink and I didn't quite do a whole pink panel because I felt like it was long enough. It's a pretty, you know, pretty big blanket, but I really like how it worked out. And this has been in our living room because the kids love it. So they just really enjoy um, the crochet stuff and getting cozy like for TV time and stuff. They'll grab some of the blankets and Olivia will grab this now and just cozy up. So those are the two projects that I have completed. I actually have four work in progress or whips and I'm going to walk through those. And this one I probably could get a little bit further on. I am using, what is this? I'm using a four and a half millimeter hook for this one. This is, um, I think it's a birthday cakes and candles uh, blanket and it's a spiral blanket from the center. So you start in the center, work your way out and make it as big as you want it. And it's very, very dainty and light. And I used this yarn. It's a really pretty galaxy-esque yarn, but I know I'm going to run out of this and I don't know what I'm going to pair it with because it is a very thin, dainty yarn and I don't have anything. I'll hold it up. I currently don't have anything that will match this or go with it or it fits the same like thickness because it's so delicate and dainty and pretty. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one yet. So I could still work quite a bit more because I have quite a bit of the yarn ball left, but I have to find something to go with it. So this one's just been kind of sitting there and I've been thinking about it. I don't know what to do with it yet. So if you have ideas or suggestions or similar yarns, I don't know where I even got this yarn. I have the little like paper sheet. I need to look it up to see if I can order more, but it's just sitting there all lonely and halfway done, <laughs> not even halfway done, but I really like this stitch. I found this on YouTube, so I'll link to the actual stitching and it's really pretty and it's intricate and I love the dainty lacy feel of it. And this yarn is really nice too. Even though it has the tinsel in it, it does not feel scratchy or tough or anything. So I wanna keep this one like super soft and beautiful, but I need more yarn for this one. So that one is to the side. I did end up ordering more yarn for two of my whips, not for that one, but for two of them. So I found this one at Yarnspirations and they used different yarn. I used the Happy Mandala yarn. I have made a blanket with the Trolls Mandala yarn, but this is the Mandala Ombre yarn. So it has a little bit of like different colorations in it. And this is a chevron blanket. I really liked this. They had a little like pattern that you can use. There's a whole tutorial like that walks you from start to finish how to do this. And it is, um, a couple of rows to start and then quite a few repeat rows and it has a puff stitch which I think is super cute and this one I ended up using the three balls that I had um, the three cakes that I had technically they're cakes and then running out and needing more so I set this one aside but I really really love the way this one has turned out and again like there's strings hanging off of it but you guys can see like how beautiful is that? I love the colors of it. I love the zigzag chevrons. I love all the different holes and stitches and puff stitches. It's just a really fun one. And like, it does not match my house at all. It's like super bright and crazy, but it could definitely like go in the kids space or whatever, because it's so fun and beautiful. And it's a fun one to do because the stitches change and it keeps you interested. Sometimes like the shell stitch blanket, it's the same stitch over and over and over and it gets kind of boring, but this one, keeps me entertained because there's always a different stitch and I have been having to, when I was working on this one, I did have to like refer to the little guide and make sure I'm doing the right stitch the next one. And I think I ended up skipping the puff stitch and not realizing it one row. So there is a little bit of variation in the pattern, but like nobody's gonna notice. <laughs> it's just me knowing that that has happened. But I really like this one. So I did end up ordering more. You'll see that in the haul at the end of this video, but I really, really like that one. And then I am making another sweater. I ended up starting this sweater before actually starting this cardigan and running out of the yarn, but wanting to keep the yarn the same. So I was working on the last um, sleeve of it. You can see the sleeve is starting to work and it has the same little like um, almost cable stitch front post double crochet, back post double crochet pattern for the ribbing on it. And I really like it. I'll show you guys a bigger panel so you can see. I think I've gotten 
the front panel and the side panels done, but I still need the sleeve. So I did end up ordering more of this yarn, but this one again, it's like really cool how the stitches vary and you get a really nice pattern. And this is just gonna be like a really pretty summer cardigan that I can wear, but look how cute that is. I love the, these puff stitches. I do not know what she called it, but it is a puff stitch around a double crochet. And it's really cool. It took me a minute to figure out how to do it. And then the rest of it's just easy. But I really like the summeriness of it. I picked out this ice cream yarn to use for it. And then I was like, wow, it's super bright. It's called Tutti Fruity. And it's like really in your face, bright, rainbowy, And I love it. It's funky. I probably won't wear it anywhere. Like again, like I don't wear that bright of stuff. And I don't know if I will wear any of my creations out except like my headbands and stuff. But I really, really like it. I've got most of it done. I just ran out and I went to Michael's to pick some up and they did not have this one. And it was funny because I went into Michael's one day, like a month ago, they had a whole end cap of the ice cream yarn. And then I went in this last time to specifically pick up like one more skein or two more skeins of this and they didn't have any ice cream yarn at all. So it just, you never know what you're gonna get. So I did have to order this one as well. So those are both in the haul. And then my last whip is the one I'm currently working on right now. And I found this super cute heart sweater and it's just a heart sweater. I've got the heart, I'm working on the front panel and that's as far as I've gotten so far. And I'm using another of the mandala yarns. These are super duper soft. This is the mandala and it is unicorn. So those are the colors in it. And I really, really like the color variation. And I thought it would work perfect for a heart sweater. And I did end up starting to cut it apart to use the different colors, but I did not in the beginning. I'm gonna take my hook out here. I'm using a four millimeter hook for this one, by the way. I don't know the other ones. I just follow what the yarn says. For this one, I used a smaller one because that's what she said to use. And she said to use a three weight, a lightweight um, yarn. So I did, and it's super cute. I did end up thinking I was just gonna go around and around and not cut and piece the yarn together. But then I have this little bit of overhang on the first heart. And then the next color was gonna be like multiple, multiple rows. And I wanted it to be a little bit better than that. So I did after this decide to cut them every two rows, which you're supposed to do. And then I patched up the colors. So that's the only one where the color like bleeds out on the side. The rest of them I have cut and patched. But here's the neck hole. I'm just starting to get the shape of the sweater, but I think it's super cute. Like the little heart, the different variations of the pinks and the blues and the purples. It's really great. So I am on my first cake. This is gonna be my second one. And I still have other stuff. This is my like old lady crochet box that I carry around with me. Um, but this one, I balled up the yarns as I've not needed that color anymore. I do the two rows and then I ball up the rest until I get to the next color change. So I've got all my little yarn balls in there. I've got stitch markers. This is the last bit of the cake that I'm gonna be using up for the current row that I'm on. And then I have these scissors that came in my crochet kit. So I really like these. I just keep them in there and then make sure that this is not within reach so Stella can't accidentally hurt herself. But this is my little basket that I have with me. It does have a little handle so I can like carry it around. <laughs> And that is my current whip. I'm working on this one like hardcore right now. And then I have scraps. I don't know if I consider this like a work in progress item, but I am making a just an infinity granny square. It's just in a granny square pattern that you just keep going with. And this is what I'm putting all my scraps on. So right now I've got it a pretty good size and I have more scraps and things to put on it. This is just what I work on as I want to. I just have the scraps next to it. That is it as far as my completed projects and my whips. So let's go ahead and change camera angles and I'm going to go ahead and walk through all of the yarn that I purchased. Okay, I ended up ordering most of this from michaels.com and then picking up some at Michaels. When you order on michaels.com, my best friend said like bigger skeins of things, you only have to order two. But for all the yarns I've ever ordered from michaels.com, they do require you to order three. So you have to put three in your basket or it will not let you check out. So I ended up with three of everything aside from the ones I picked up in store. So I did end up ordering some duplicate ice cream yarns. I already have this one, but I wanted to make some sort of sweater with it and I knew I would need more. So I got this one, this is called Moon Mist. You can see the color variation in there. I thought it was really, really pretty. So I have six of these now to make a sweater with and hopefully that is plenty. And then I needed more of the Tutti Fruity. This is again, Lion Brand ice cream yarn. And this is what I made that summer sweater with. And I think I'm only gonna need like one or one and a half of these. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest. Maybe make a hat or something, a headband, a couple headbands, I don't know. But I really, really liked working with this ice cream yarn. I've used it for a few things now and I really like it. So it's nice and soft and it works perfect for that like summer light sweater that I'm trying to do. So I did end up with three more of those. I probably won't use all three for that project. 
And then I also went into the store. I had a coupon voucher thing, so I used my five or ten dollars or whatever it was and got two of these. Karen Yarn Inspirations Big Cakes and there's what it looks like. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I just ended up with two because I knew I would need more yarn and that's the thing I found. It's the theme. I always run out of yarn. Like when I'm doing a work in progress, I run out of yarn and then I can't finish my project until I order more or go get more and it's really annoying. So I thought it's best to just get more than I think now. Like that's my motto now. Get more than you think. And there's like a stitched up thing with this one. So I don't know if I'm going to do a sweater or what with this, like winter hats. I don't know. It's just a really pretty yarn and it's nice and thick and fuzzy. This is a medium weight, number four. So I will have fun with that at some point. And then I ended up with two of the mandalas. So this is the mandala ombre in the happy pattern. And this is the one that I was doing with the chevron blanket. So I've got three more and we'll see if that gets me the full blanket length that I'm wanting. So I really like, I like how it has the little variation in all the colors. Love that, that's the ombre one that has that little effect and it's really, really pretty. So hopefully that will be enough for my chevron blanket. And then I ordered this one thinking I would make a very pretty sweater for myself or for one of the girls with this one. This is another mandala yarn and this one is called Cupid, which makes perfect sense. It's all nice and pink and pretty. It's just tons of shades of pink. So I thought it'd work up into a really pretty sweater. These ones don't uh, vary and change nearly as often as these ice cream ones. These ice cream ones change all the time. So you get a really like tie dye type effect with those where the uh, mandala ones change pretty gradually. So you get a gradual change. And I think these are great for sweater ideas. So I plan on making a sweater that just, you know, you stitch all the way up and you'll get a really nice gradient up the sweater. So that's my project plans for this one at some point. And that is it. So this video is done. I hope you guys liked this video. It's different for something on this channel. So I hope that you guys are open to it and enjoy it. And be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I try to upload a video every week. So I'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.